I, I, I can think of three, I suppose, po possibilities. Um, one is the so-called gay uncle the theory, mm. where, where you, you look after your nephews and nieces or other relatives. And that makes sense in a, in a wild ancestral human where perhaps the sort of butch men went out hunting and, um, and left their, their children in charge of in the charge of mm -hmm. not only the mothers but also uncles, I mean the, maybe the brothers of the... Of the so that, that, that means that the, that the gay gene was passed on in the bodies of the children who were being protected by the gay uncles. So that, that's, that's one possibility. Right, and that's one that makes a lot of sense. I right? And I think that, uh, you know, I think that does explain uh, why the gay gene was passed on. And I think there's a lot more we're going to learn about yeah. that. The second theory is the so-called sneaky fucker theory, which is the idea that uh, the males who possess the gay gene, many of them may not have been wholly homosexual, they may have been bisexual. Uh, in, now, in that case, again, go back to our scenario mm -hmm. of the um, dominant males going off hunting and leaving behind um, the women and children in the charge of other males. Uh, and if there were other males who were known to be homosexual, then the dominant uh, males would have trusted them uh, not to mate with the females. I mean, the, the, we're imagining a situation in which the dominant males are very possessive mm -hmm. about their females, perhaps harem holders. And so being gay would have been a, a pretty good certificate that you can, you can safely leave your, your women with me. Now, if they were bisexual, uh, that would have been a false assumption. And once again, we now have a way in which the gay gene could have been passed on. Right. I mean, it does make sense in that, in that way because uh, they could go off and be more trusting. And we see that today where straight friends just loved that they won't let their, their wives hang out with uh, uh, other straight guys. And they get too close. But if you're gay, oh, it's great. Go yes. out and have a good time. And yes. it doesn't seem to yeah. be that uh, jealousy. Yes. So that, that definitely makes sense both uh, historically and also contemporarily. Mm. Well, now, I mean, it's hard, and it seems like it would make a lot of sense. It's hardly a good gay rights slogan. No, but, that's uh, right. But no, that, uh, that, that, it, it actually right. is, uh, it, it does make sense from a biological but, I mean, you, you see that the, the, the way the argument's going, obviously, uh -huh. that, that, that it, it could be that, uh, that males in our wild ancestors who possessed the gay gene, that they, that they, that they got their genes into, into the next generation by, by using that, that strategy. And being gay was, or, or at least, being bisexual, being gay was a very convincing way of lulling the suspicions of the dominant males. That's interesting. The, the question with that theory remains for today, though. If people were doing that back then, and then in more modern terms, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we had people pressured into getting married and reproducing with their genes. Uh, what happens for the next gen or few generations when gay people are just simply coming out and they're not having sex with the opposite sex. Are we going to see a decrease in homosexuality? Well, well uh, it, we might do, I suppose, on that, on that theory, but it would probably take longer uh -huh. than the couple of decades that, we've, that we're playing with now. So um, I, I think a, perhaps a more serious objection might be uh, I, I don't know what percentage of men are bisexual as opposed to purely homosexual. Right. Perhaps you know that. I, I don't know that, but it seems to me that there were a lot more women that are bisexual. I can't think of really too many guys, they start out as bisexual and they usually come out as gay later. Now there are men who are bisexual, but I just think it's a smaller percentage than people might think, just from, from my experience having met in being in the gay community and running organizations or meeting thousands yeah. of people over yes. the years, I can't think of too many people that hop back and forth. No. And, and you couldn't imagine yourself, I mean, you, 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 you couldn't, couldn't imagine being bisexual. Not in my wildest dreams I couldn't imagine that. And if I would, I'd be happy, although it would be quite distracting. But, uh, yeah, it's just something I could not imagine. Right. Okay. And th the third theory that I, I suggest is a, is a rather more um, esoteric one is that when we talk about a gene for something or other, a, a gene for anything, a gene for X, a gene for being aggressive, a gene for um, having blue eyes, a gene for being gay, uh, it doesn't always have to be a gene for that thing. It's a gene for that thing under the right environmental 
conditions. So, for example, the gay gene that, that manifests itself now in an urban environment in uh, homosexual tendencies might, in a very different environment out on the African plains, have manifested itself in another way. Genes are not that deterministic. They can show themselves in one way under one environmental circumstance, in a different way under another one. So just, just, just as, as an example of that, suppose that bottle feeding is the environment, this is a purely hypothetical thing, suppose bottle feeding is the environmental circumstance that means that the gay gene manifests itself in gay behavior. But if you're breastfed, and please don't imagine I'm, I'm, I think that's true, it's just, a, mm -hmm. it's just an example. But if you're breastfed, it doesn't. Well, before bottles were invented, that means that the gay gene would never have, have manifested itself in gay behavior at all. It would have manifested itself as something quite different. I mean, maybe the ability to, to be good at tracking animal prey or something of that sort. Once bottle feeding came in, it changes the manifestation of the gene. So what this theory is saying is that there's really no such thing as the gay gene. There's the gay gene given that the, the cultural or environmental circumstances are right. And before that, it wasn't a gay gene at all. So there was nothing to stop it getting passed on it, it, because it was good for something quite different in, in those days.